Hey, folks, welcome to Market Intraday Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. This video for Thursday, November 10th, 2011, is sponsored by Realtick. All right, let's get right into the mix today. The markets are hovering slightly higher, not really getting back what they lost yesterday, but at least the Dow is up about 135 points, NASDAQ up 7.5, and the S&P 500 up about 11.5 on the day. Basically, almost 1 plus percent on the Dow and S&P. NASDAQ is very, very weak today on the back of Apple, and that's only up one-third of one percent. All right, so if you look at the charts today, you can see there's been a lot of volatility again after a dramatic decline yesterday. The reason for the decline yesterday is very, very simple. What we saw was the Italian yield on the 10-year go above 7%. As soon as it went above 7% and crept higher, the markets just went vertical to the downside. Now, what happened overnight? The ECB came in, pushed the yield back below 7%. That's why we had the gap up today. During market hours, that yield started to rise again. And as the yield rose, we saw the markets coming in. Then the yield started to back off, and the markets have floated back up. So again, it's all about the yields in Europe, especially Italy, because Italy's the biggest of them all. You know, their, their total debt or so forth is in the trillion dollar range. So compared to Greece, it's multiple times, five, six times as big as Greece. So in terms of catastrophe, that's the one everyone's watching now. Greece is kind of on the back burner, and Italy, it's all about that. So again, markets are holding steady here, but people are still very, very wary. You could make a case that you have an in-spirit of bearish pattern developing off of this dramatic down move. This move down yesterday, and if you take a look and you connect these lows, you can clearly see that the market continues to trade sideways to up off of this down move, which does tell me there may be further downside in the not-too-distant future. All right, so that's the initial. Uh, secondly, there were some good scalps today. It was definitely a wild scalping day in the intraday stock chat. Remember, folks, here at In The Money Stocks, we offer you a seven-day free trial. No obligation. As long as you cancel before the end, you do not get charged for any service here. So it's a great thing about this service. We allow you to check it out now. Uh, there's a seven-day free trial for the Research Center. The Research Center includes everything listed under In The Money Stocks underneath the Research Center, which is the nightly videos, daily market reports, hot charts and alerts, with swing trade alerts live, um, you know, all the other key things out there. I mean, there's more and more things listed. You get that all included in the Research Center. If you want more of a hand-holding type experience with day trading, swing trading, market analysis, uh, viewing my live charts, my partner's live charts, and asking questions, then the chat room is for you. All right, so again, you can choose either. You can do free trials of both and cancel one, not the other. really doesn't really matter to us. We just want to give you that inside view of the elite traders here at InTheMoneyStocks.com. All right, bottom line is the markets gapped up today. We had a great sell. There were multiple scalps. The scalp of the day, though, I have to say, was this scalp right here. There was a gap fill scalp I called out in the intraday stock chat, which happened to be the low of the day here. And since then, the markets have moved up beautifully and up, up, and away. And we've pulled back a little bit into the 20 moving average here. But nonetheless, you're holding that. Volume has gotten light this afternoon, which does tell me we'll probably hold up and close positive on the day across the markets. All right, and again, multiple scalps today. Very, very nice action. Let's take a look at some other stocks out there. What's moving today? First off, we'll look at the dollar. The UUP is the dollar ETF. And what you can clearly see is that as those yields go up or down in Europe, especially in Italy, the dollar is going the inverse way, and the markets obviously are being bothered by that. The markets continue to be inverse to the dollar, which is being controlled by Europe and the euro, and ultimately the yields. So the dollar is slightly lower today. As we know, when the dollar is slightly lower, generally markets are higher. That's the case today. Uh, the USO is having a nice solid day today. Oil continues to have this underlying bid. Um, some people think it's because of the down, down dollar. I don't think it has much to do with the dollar today because the dollar is not that much weaker. It's only down slightly. It's more to do with this continued worry over Iran and their nuclear program and what Israel's been saying. And then you also have to look at the positive nature of the market. A lot of people think that Europe is going to be all hunky-dory now. It's all going to be great and things are going to go back to massive amounts of growth in the world. I'm a little more skeptical about that. I think ultimately oil will come down, but oil is having a decent little bounce back around yesterday's highs at this point. All right, if we look at the daily chart of the USO, I think it's very telling. You can see the extension move here. You have the 200 moving average, and then you also have this pivot top just above by a little bit. Both of these, this is resistance here, and if you get through this level, this is secondary resistance on the USO. All right. 
If we take a look at the GLD, GLD was down more today, but has come back a little bit. You can see a float up. Look at the early sell-off on gold, but gold did come back very, very nicely here towards the later portions of the day. Stocks, let's take a look at Apple Computer. Apple today, a very ugly day. There's worries about growth on Apple. All right, so this is causing some selling. I gave this out to the Research Center members in the nightly video that I post every single night, which is about 30 minutes in length. I kept on talking about the down move here and the in spirit of bearish pattern right here. Classic in spirit of pattern, very bearish chart, and ultimately we talked about it falling over the last few days, and it started yesterday and collapsed again today. So those members that took that short trade or bought puts on Apple are rocking it big time here. I still think there's more downside. Ultimately, I think Apple's going here. I really do think Apple's going to go down to that 200 moving average eventually, although it would have some bounces along the way. All right, other stocks in motion today. GMCR, take a look at this, guys. Uh, many people asked me, would I be a buyer at these levels a couple weeks ago or a week or two ago? I kept on saying, no, it's going lower. Why? Because the chart was telling me it was going lower. It never reached a major support, and you actually had an in spirit of bearish pattern here with the 20 sloping down with a necktie through the 200. And a crossover, a golden cross over the 200 to the downside. That's very, very bearish. That analysis turned out to be dead on. GMCR down $26 today. We're finally entering an area where you're starting to find a little bit of support right here. All right, see this little pivot gap? Big, big gap. You're right in there. You could still go a little bit lower. You have another level right here, um, right there, and then another major gap fill right here. All right, so it, there is a chance it does go a little bit lower, but I will say this. A majority of the downside is in now. It's just a matter of giving it the ITMS three-day rule and then reevaluating it in a couple days. We'll see where it is, see if it starts to look good. But considering where it was yesterday in the last few days, it looks a hell of a lot better than it did. So it's starting to be on my radar, but I'm going to still give it what I call the ITMS three-day rule, which is a key proprietary technique along with river theory and confirmation signal and so forth um, that we've developed here in the Money Stocks to make us the expert traders that we are as we continue to profit. All right, let's talk about some other stocks today. What other stocks are making moves? Research in Motion continues to be under pressure, down 50 cents today. Now, this stock, a lot of people are wondering, well, where's the bottom in this stock? I've isolated the bottom. I think it's going to go to about the $15 to $14.50 level. Once it gets there, I think the risk-reward is on the positive side at that point because you start to have that buyout being very plausible. And also, at this point, you're hitting major supports on the daily chart. So I'm still thinking that that level, you actually have a good amount of drop, probably another 20% down on research in motion before it finally hits bottom. But once it does, I think I will be watching very closely. And of course, folks, when I take a swing trade, I post it in the hot charts and alerts live with a timestamp, and everyone else can see that and so forth. Any members here at In The Money Stocks, whether you're a free trial member or a regular member, you get all those alerts via email or text message alert if you signed up for those. So there's awesome ways to just keep track. Um, and again, I'm going to continue to give out alerts and swing trades as I take them, folks. You guys know exactly what I'm trading, exactly where my entries are and so forth based on timestamps and so forth. All right. Transparency is the key here to help you guys learn our methodology. All right. Let's talk about a couple other stocks making moves today. Uh, as I scan through my list, Google's down slightly on the day, down about 320. But let's talk about some stocks that are rallying today. Exxon and Chevron, both having good days. Exxon's up $1.30. Solid move. You can see how it kind of came into a little bit of resistance right up here, right? Makes sense. You have a double top on the chart right there. It pulled back off of that double top. Uh, Exxon Mobil is up. Why? Well, Chevron's up too. A lot of the oil stocks are up because what did I show you earlier? Oil was having a pretty solid day, right? So it makes sense that this stock is doing pretty well today, as is Chevron and some of the other oil plays. Uh, solar stocks continue to be under some pressure. Uh, you continue to see margins just erode here across the board. A glut of, of production out of China is just killing that whole solar side. Although I do think the solar stocks will, especially the larger players, the, those will survive down the line. They'll be very, very solid plays once a lot of the smaller companies are out of the mix. So that's something to watch as well. And I'll keep you guys in the research center notified as well as in the chat room of anything that I decide to do there. All right, let's just flip back to the SPY here and get a quick little look. You can see again, we're kind of holding steady on this 20. I think there's a lot of support here. I don't expect the markets to sell hard into the end of the day. Um, for the most part, I think the markets are going to hold up for the most part and head neutral-ish or maybe even a little bit higher into the close. Um, tomorrow's another day, though. We had a big down day yesterday, now an up day. I wouldn't be surprised if we have a down day tomorrow. It's all about those yields in Italy and what happens in Europe right now, folks. So hold on. Uh, make sure if you're swing trading or investing in this market, you know exactly what you're doing. You're following the technicals and not some media nonsense hype out there. you got to 
know what you're doing in this environment and another reason to come take the seven-day free trial here at InTheMoneyStocks.com. All right, guys, take care. I will talk to you soon. Let's make some money this afternoon.